Giant sound waves could subdue tsunamis. The devastating impact of tsunamis could be reduced in the future thanks to the power of sound. According to an applied mathematician's theory, giant sound waves known as acoustic gravity waves could be used to lessen the force of a tsunami before it hits land. The theory states that two acoustic gravity waves would be released from a mitigation station in the ocean toward the tsunami. The acoustic gravity waves would exchange energy with the tsunami, spreading it out and reducing its maximum height. According to the theory, acoustic gravity waves could have reduced the height of the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami by 5 meters, which may have saved lives and protected property. Any system based on the theory would require the installation of early tsunami detection systems, which the concept's author says is relatively straightforward. However, scientists have not yet worked out how to create acoustic gravity waves, and this presents a challenging engineering problem. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Keep watching for more tsunami-related technology. The Survival Capsule could save your life during a natural disaster. The Survival Capsule was designed to help save lives during a tsunami. The 2011 tsunami off Japan's coast that killed almost 16,000 people and injured 6,000 more was inspiration to Survival Capsule creators Julian Sharp and Scott Hill. The two designed the capsule with the less mobile, the elderly, the infirm, and the young in mind. In emergency situations, a survival capsule could act as a safety shelter for those who have problems evacuating, especially on a last minute's notice. The capsules are spherical metal cages sheathed in aircraft grade aluminum shells to absorb impact. The internal walls are lined with ceramic thermal blankets to protect from extreme heat. And each capsule is equipped with a 60 minute air tank in case it's submerged underwater. The capsules come in five different capacities, ranging from two to ten people, each with varying seating designs. Tsunami waves typically flow around 25 miles per hour, but survival capsules tests have found that the capsule can withstand impacts from objects at up to 75 miles per hour. Survival capsules are currently available for pre-order. Japanese company planned tsunami survival pod a Japanese company plans to make a tsunami safety pod designed to evacuate emergency workers. Tajima Motor Company's tsunami floating shelter, Safe Plus, can hold 10 or 20 people. The larger model weighs 1,300 kilograms and measures 6.2 meters long, 2.3 meters wide, and 2.3 meters high. That's roughly the size of a large SUV and small enough to be carried by a flatbed truck. The Safe Plus can fit into a standard size car parking space. Inside, passengers have four point seat belts and protective seating. The pod is designed to right itself after being flipped over 180 degrees. Passengers can exit the pod via the main door or a hatch on the roof. The Safe Plus will cost roughly 44,000 to 48,000 US dollars depending on certain options, such as an external generator and roof-mounted solar panel. Tajima Motor plans to produce 1,000 units this year. Indonesia tests new tsunami warning system. The Indonesian government is weighing whether it should give funding to a new tsunami warning system after realizing that, whoops, the old one doesn't work. Scientists have successfully tested a prototype tsunami warning system off the west coast of Sumatra that doesn't require transmitter buoys. Following the Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami of 2004, Indonesia installed a multi-million dollar transmitter buoy tsunami warning system. However, after an earthquake in March last year, the government realized the system was useless because all the buoys had either been vandalized by boat crews or poorly maintained. In the new system, data travels through sound waves transmitted by undersea seismometers and pressure sensors. Transmitter buoys are not needed because the sound waves are refracted back into the ocean by warm surface waters to the next node in the network, a distance of up to 30 kilometers. The system requires a few kilometers of fiber optic cable at its endpoint to connect it to a shore station. The data would then be transmitted by satellite to provide tsunami warnings. The government is now considering if it's worth spending just over 100,000 US dollars to lay the fiber optic cable. 
but opinion is divided in Indonesia. Some officials say an earthquake is the only tsunami warning needed, and when a quake hits, it's time to run for higher ground. But others fear a crying wolf effect and worry that too many false tsunami alarms could make people blasé about the prospect of another devastating giant wave. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash tomonews.